you're into guitars, metal riffage, mixing, and everything in between, hit subscribe and follow along. Hi guys. Today we have another interesting video. Okay, well, I find it interesting. I'm biased though. I mean, that's why I make these after all, because they interest me. But I figured I'd do the generous thing and show you guys what I learned. We are going to walk through a live setup, a live rig setup with the HX Stomp and the Seymour Duncan Power Stage. I have a preset that I made with the HX Stomp that sends two signals. Well, it's one signal path, but it's split. One side is a full processed signal with the impulse response to send to the front of house, or in our case, an input on my audio interface. And the other one is a full process signal without an impulse response that goes to the power stage and then to a 2x12 guitar cab. Once again, thanks to my buddy Patrick for lending me his Overtone 212. Check his channel out somewhere here. I'm pointing. I don't know where. So let's walk through the setup. All right, so let's see how we have things set up back here. First of all, and most obvious, we have the guitar going into the left mono input of the HX Stomp. Then we have the guitar signal going out the left mono output, which is the full process guitar with an impulse. And this is what you would be sending to front of house. In this case, we are sending it to one of the inputs of my audio interface for the sake of this demonstration. After the amp lock, I have the signal split so that no IR, I repeat, no IR is sent out of the send, which I have set to mono. It's going out and into the input of the Seymour Duncan power stage. The power stage is then sending the signal to the cab. So we have two signal paths, essentially. One of them has the full process guitar tone with an impulse, and one of them has a full process guitar tone with no impulse. That one is going to the power stage, which is then sending to the cabinet. You don't want to send an IR through a cabinet. It's redundant. It's not necessary. It's not going to sound right. So that's how we have everything physically routed. All right, guys, so we are here in HX Edit, and I wanted to kind of run through how you set this up, how you create this signal. So um, first off, I'll get rid of this. You're going to start off with a basic patch, all right? So we have our main left and right inputs. Got my input gate on. We're not going to go into too much detail. We have the Scream 808. We have our amp lock. We have our IR. Now, in order to kind of create that split, you can't just drag this blank one down, so you have to create a block. It's a little bit of a quirk. A volume block or a gain block. We are not going to do anything to it. We're just going to drag it down, and it's going to create this splitter. But we want the splitter to happen after the amp, before the IR. So it splits, sends the IR path signal, and then this is a mixer. We don't want this to combine again. We want it to split and it's going to, by default, send it out the send, the stereo send on the side of the HX stomp, but I don't need it to be stereo. Hey, it's mono right now. Um, I feel like before, if it, sometimes it'll default to stereo. We want it mono. And um, so what's happening is it's sending the full process signal with the IR out the main left and right. And if you remember, the left mono is going out and would be going out to front of house, or in our case, for demonstration purposes, it's going into my audio interface. Then the raw amp track or amp path with no IR is headed out to the send. The send is set to mono. That mono signal is going to the Seymour Duncan power stage, which is then powering our 2x12 for stage sound. And that's it. Pretty simple. Now let's record a couple riffs. We have two tracks set up to record for demonstration purposes. One is recording the full signal with impulse response acting as our front of house signal. The second is recording the mic'd up 2x12. We're using an SM57. And again, this is just to demonstrate proof of concept. More than likely, if you are sending to front of house, you won't want to be miking up the cab on stage. But instead, you're going to use that cab as stage sound. So here we go. Thank you. 
all appropriate links down below in the description, including links to my music. And if you dig what I'm putting down, hit subscribe and follow along. All right, so first off, I hope that I explained everything clear enough and that you can see that this is a pretty easy setup that is both powerful and super compact. If you have any further questions, leave them down below or better yet, join me on one of my weekly live streams every Sunday starting now. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. You guys are great. We'll see you in the next one.